champion of Santa Fe. Boca has won three of their first four matches in all competitions as the clausura begins. Carlos Bianchi wants to keep the winning alive and make sure Boca can perhaps walk out with two trophies. Bonfield, on the other hand, are still looking for their first victory. They did get a point in round one, but lost a week ago to Estudiantes. Now's the time to pull the shocker. Welcome to La Bobonera for round three of the Clausura tournament. It's a battle of the bees. Boca, Bonfield, City of Buenos Aires, well represented for this one. Glad you could join us on Max Bellos, along with Chris Jimbo. Uh, I just love the way you say it, Max. La Bombonera, the Bon Bon Box in Buenos Aires. Boca Juniors to lost to Leon de Santa Fe in the last round. Bonfield, no wins in the Clausura tournament so far. Oh, and a glorious day here in La Boca as we look at the starting 11. Abondanchiri will be the goalkeeper, Ibarra, Burdizo, Cross, and Calvo. Cristobal, Pinto, Donet in the midfield. Tevez will be the playmaker up front with Barros Quiloto, the captain. And Pipa Esteves, ex San Lorenzo, finally in the starting lineup. The coach, Caldito Bianchi. Banfield with Nod, Barraza, Gonzalez, Rodriguez, and Sanguinetti. Moreno, Cavallo, Fernandez, and Jimenez. Up front, Cervera and Daniel Vilos. The coach, Luis Garisto, the goalkeeper, one of the two new signings this year, Enzo Nozzi. There you have it. We are ready for action. Boca and Banfield coming up. The first half kickoff. We'll be right back. Appreciate this one, and we will track his progress. One, two, three, four, 22. Here we go. 90 minutes of the beautiful game. Match: Boca and Banfield. Boca defeated Colo Colo in Copa Libertadores midweek in Santiago. In Santiago, two goals by Moreno, and they also defeated Nacional from Uruguay before that. Racing with a great victory, goal by Uruguay. And uh, we're talking about Libertadores. I think Alianza Lima should be barred from the competition from this year forward. Getting smashed by Gimnasio de la Plata, 5-1. And I don't think they've won a Libertadores match in like three years. Peruvian football should be reprimanded. Good start for the Argentine side. Even River got a win in the midweek. Broke off a good start there. They did lose at Union of Santa Fe. And I always take a look as the season develops but some interesting teams at the top of the table although we're just three rounds in Vélez Sarsfield who are three for three and they have yet to allow a goal we saw them last week they are your leaders Grossa Rafael pushing forward now Pinto could see Carlos Devis back out although he is wearing the number 19 jersey Cristobal. Some intensity at the beginning of the game since you're talking about the Clausura tournament, about Independiente. Man. Defending champions, Apertura champions, they have lost the first three games they have played. And the last one, 3 0 to Olimpo. It's a really rotten. No one could have ever imagined it could have got as bad as it has. Severa. Independiente lost all three matches and yet to score a goal. And they are but naked last. It is amazing how these two teams so much in such little time. Only three minutes into the half in Banfield, surprisingly keeping possession of the ball and closer to Abondanchini than expected, getting the first corner kick of the match. Big Daniel Vilos. He should be a 
threat up in the air. You would imagine. Perseveres, doesn't he? Now he's in the 18. And, uh, Julio Barraza with his hands full there. <laughs> Come yeah. here, let me show you. Let me show you how he was grabbing me before supposedly I committed the foul. Great run. So important for a forward to be able to resist the defender on his back without losing the ball. If that were ever a foul, to me that would be on, on the defense. There he is, finally we get a chance to see the talented Carlitos, playmaker Carlitos. Ibarra. Stavon. And Boca learning uh, to uh, survive whilst playing in two competitions. So a lot of players getting playing time. Different combinations being used on a weekly basis. Well, this is a very different midfield. No Raul Caccini, no Diego Caña, the player who came back from Atletico Celaya. Villarreal in Spain before Atletico Celaya. Alfredo Moreno, either who was the, the hero in midweek, he scored twice against Colo Colo, Calito Bianchi said that was just a logic win for Boca, they played it much better than Colo Colo. Hopefully here, so early in the game, we don't have to have, or they don't have to have, to make a substitution so early in the match. getting a run today. Oh, 
Barbosa. Soccer fans in the stadium get so impatient so soon all the time. Boca not playing well, and they let him know. Hey, we're waiting for some uh, quality football. The first two rounds, although we had a great finish last week, we're not seeing the uh, punctuation, if you will, the desire, the the fireworks. Certainly not many goals either. Maybe here. Well struck, knocked out by Adrian Gonzalez. Ibarra. Cross. And that looked to be on its way through off the head of Gonet, but deflected by one of the Mantua defenders. This is exactly what we're talking about. Free flowing football. Nice cross. Good header by Gonet going down. Getting the second corner kick of the game for Boca. Esqueloto. It's a lot underneath it. Ibarra. Esqueloto with first touch. Gets around Jimenez. Back at the 18. Esqueloto. Three Boca players were close. Caballo. In play. Cervera, his cross, corner kick. See, that should be the, the way the match uh, will be played. Free-flowing football on one side, Boca, practical football. Quick counter-attack on the other side for Banfield. Getting corner kick number two. scorers like Moreno and Fabianesi do that once in a while they do get greedy just because that's the way they get to score Ivan Moreno and Fabianesi with those two goals the top scorer of the team only two goals they've scored shut out Estudiantes a week ago free kick to be taken by Walter Jimenez Vena cleared away by Abundanzieri, Esqueloto. He knows he has to carry the team on his shoulders, and he's playing very, very well. A lot of confidence in Guillermo Barro Esqueloto. Nice to see the twin brother playing like that. He could be a great midfielder. Later in his career, you know, and it hasn't been the greatest, greatest beginning of the seasons uh, this year in Argentina one of the main reasons well, they sell the players way too young, way too quick the big ones, the big stars how much longer does this guy have before he's sold off becomes more difficult for the coaches to put teams together to play the way they want Unfortunately, we get to see not so great soccer in the beginning, in the first couple of uh, rounds of the Clausura. Where did he learn that? It'll get better. <laughs> Is that from Guillermo? <laughs> 18 years of age, he's learning the little intricacies of being a playmaker, Carlos Devers, which involves perhaps a little diving from time to time. Who gets a chance to 
get into the Boca 11, part of the youth system, 20 years of age. Look at your Banfield, maybe exploit the side that Cristofal is defending at. Jimenez. Oh, get through, but no problem for Abundanzieri. Fire power behind it. Scrappy for him. Moreno y Fabianesi. Cervera. Jimenez. Cervera around Calvo. Some free-flowing football on this side of the pitch also with Banfield uh, looking for one another, finding each other. Very good, uh, very good first quarter of an hour by the visitors. But any Fabian SCP lost goal! Goal! The big man gets in there and loose and 1-0 Banfield to the shock of the folks at La Bombonera, with the exception of that group. Two things. We said it before, he should be a threat up in the air. You would imagine, you said. Well, yep, he is. Second, it was a good beginning, a good first quarter of an hour for Banfield this is the reward great goal one surprisingly though one nil number nine Daniel Vilos putting the ball in the back of the net hey and the uh, theme developing although it certainly could and probably will change but the big clubs continue to struggle in league play River losing at home, Independiente winless. Now Boca coming off a loss, trailing at home to lowly Banfield. There's a player on the ground. The ref will have to check on him. Now, if you have such a tall forward on a set-up play, on a corner kick, put two defenders on him. Why do you have two Banfield players going for that ball and only one defender? Mental lapses, then you pay the price. Luis Garisto showing any emotion, but uh, be very happy with the way his team started. Although, not much in the opening minutes, they do have the lead. Again, we have this pedestrian pace developing in this match. One field player down, and let's take a look who it is. That'd be Cervera. We'll see if he can go. Oh, there's the man. You need some firepower off the bench. Go to Jose Sanchez. Donet. Esqueloto. Having some fun with Barazza. Here's the cross to the far post and beyond. Devez. Good touch out. Right back to him, onside. Plenty of space for the cross. Jimenez closes. Now the cross. Good away by Barazza. Calvo. Vilos. Calvo improving every time we see him. role usually filled by Clemente Rodriguez. Cristobal. Cervera ready to come back into the match. Gustavo Bassi trying to 
way. I don't understand why. Sanguinetti. Jimenez. More offensive weapons for Banfield out there with Silvera, Bilos, Moreno, Fabianesi, and Jimenez. Normally on the road, when you're one of the smaller clubs, generally you feel the more defensive side. Not for Luis Garisto. Calvo. Bilos again nice. being a nuisance, but it's taken by Tevez. Flag offside. Oh, Went up. Great move by Tevez, I believe. Even the even the players are were waiting for the offside call. Ooh, he has to be alert. More alert than that. He's just watching the player. Tevez are carrying the ball. Take a look at the defenders. Position yourself better, especially if you play inside the PK. The penalty kick. An old case of ball watching. Moreno y Fabianesi, Barasa, or Vera who pulls off his run. With the goal now, Banfield, the goal will let them know that they are capable. Wrong place, wrong time again, Botso. Wrong place, wrong time. Are you kidding me? They got the cheap seats. You were saying? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we love our production crew down in Argentina. Stand up job as always. Oh, now, yeah, the goal will let them know. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's get back to the game. Rodriguez. Stale opening for Boca. Ibarra. The vowel. Nice. Great touch. Donet. Into the sides. Netting. Tough week for him last weekend, losing to his former club, Union of Santa Fe. That couldn't have been a pleasant feeling. He even looks a little bit like uh, Guillermo Barroch Quiloto. The twin brother all over the place. One touch. He should have gone with the cross. He has players waiting, asking for the ball. And there you see Tevez giving him a look. Gonzalez. Rodriguez. The experienced Banfield side out there today. Rosa. Donet. He's been one of the most consistent performers for Boca pretty much in every lineup so far this young season. Devez. Donet. Plenty of options here. Oh, worked out rather well. Ibarra. And, uh, Pinto. Banfield with the advantage now. Either they have the confidence to go looking for more goals or they believe this is just what they need, what they want. Business is done and try to keep the score 1-0. Way too early in the game though for the visitors to score the goal. Another player on the ground, I believe this is Daniel Vilos. It is indeed. While well, he's on the ground, some injury issues to talk about with Boca. Siquiel Gonzalez. He's 
out. And also Rolando Schiavi, who was talking about some pain before the match against Colo Colo, turned out to be appendicitis. Maybe they caught that in advance, but he's going to be out for a long stretch. Uh. A very awkward landing. He landed on his back. Must be a good day for that lot. Quickly for Banfield, two changes to the 11 that played last weekend. Fabian Santa Cruz suspended. Roberto Colauti, their goal scorer, is unable to play against Boca because Boca own his rights. Great day in Buenos Aires. Huh? The summer coming down to an end. Enjoy the daylight while it's there. Mm -hmm. Ibarra. Vilos ready to make his way back on the pitch. Esqueloto. He's been an active body, but not many of his teammates have been thus far as we're at the 25th minute. Oh, excellent touch on the left side. Hernandez. Moreno y Fabianesi. Got to carry his mother's name. He was born in Badajoz, Spain. Outside, La Voz del Estadio. Telling everybody that some kids lost. Jeremias, huh? That's a scary prospect. Jeremias' dad must be looking at the pretty girls, you know, in the stadium. <laughs> like that. Around you, you have 60,000 maniacs. And then a bunch of uh, beautiful ladies. Gonzalez. On field, getting all the loose balls. Ooh. Vera charging, but Abondanzieri got there first. Still a very flat effort from Boca. We saw this with River Plate last week in the first half. Then they made some changes which spruce things up a bit. Likes of Boca and River not as deep as they once were. Libertadores action is ongoing. The depth is tested. Big touch there by Burdizo. Gets it to Ibarra. Long ball. Chasing. On net. Esqueloto! Frustration piling up. Great effort by the net. And very smart play by Guillermo Barrochquillo. That's the net with the cross. Chasing the ball down, Guillermo Barrochquillo, and then the volley. If that one goes in... Oh. Some activity on the Banfield bench. or Vilos a little worse than we thought. Sanguinetti. Six Sanguinettis in the league, but I think he's the only Argentine one. The others are from Uruguay. He's the captain, Vilos. Sanguinetti, Vilos. 
Jimenez. Vilos again. Fernandez. Free kick, Cristoval that time as they went to the young man. Don't you need Serna back on the pitch? Don't you need a defender, a midfielder right in front of the two central defenders to do a much better job than that? Do not commit so many fouls so close to the penalty area. That's one of the deepest positions for Boca, that defensive midfielder, but nothing there. It's Pinto's job at the back. Pataglia available. This effort goes way over the crossbar. On the pitch, for the players, that is, without a doubt, one of the most difficult ones and one of the most important ones. Uh, Roy Keane for Manchester United, Patrick Vieira, Chicho Serna when he used to play here. They, you know, they are the, the kings of the midfield. No accident, usually those players that end up being the leaders of the side. One of my favorites, Dieter Eils, former German international. Esqueloto, Barasa all over him. Not be long before we have a Esqueloto meltdown. And foul again on Cristoval. See, that's the thing. In the midfield, it's supposed to be once again free flowing football. But it seems every time Boca loses the ball, they commit a foul. Close to the PK, close to the midfield. Half an hour played, Banfield out in front, 1-0, courtesy of Daniel Pilos. Accepted by Rodriguez. Cambia la pelota. Everybody was so happy about Calito Tevez uh, coming back to the pick. Tevez, the players, the fans, the coach. We were now somebody tell Tevez to start playing. That's the reason they are so flat. As you said it, man. There's a better effort from Tevez and he gets involved. Not a good ball to the right side for Estevez. That's going to be tricky, I'm sure. Pushing forward. Worked by Sanguinetti. Banfield answer. Jimenez. Moreno y Fabianesi. Cervera. Very direct player. Commits the foul over Calvo. Since the days of Rodolfo Arruabarina, Boca Juniors have not had another good at, at an international level uh, left side of fullback. Had such a good run of left sided fullbacks for Jorginho, a while. The Brazilian, remember? Uh, it didn't work out. Another one who went to Vélez later. Recently? Very recently, after uh, Arrua Varina. There have been at least four or five. Clemente Rodriguez, the one that's not playing today. And maybe the best out of the bunch. After Rodolfo Arrua Varina left for Villarreal. Still, they could use an upgrade there. River Plate had back-to-back -back left backs of Sorin and Placente. Not too shabby. Esqueloto into the mixer. It catches the head of Gonzalez. But only Fabianesi chasing. And the same thing happened with uh, Hugo Ibarra on the right side. They could not find another one of the same quality, of the same level, until he came back. Rua Barena currently at Villarreal in Spain. But they're very happy with them. Moved over to Estevez.
Cristoval. Devitt. He was busy with the uh, Argentine under-20 side in the South American qualifiers. Probably on his way to the World Championships a little later on. Uh, to be held, I believe, in the United Arab Emirates. Calvo. An excellent job thus far from Banfield. Good defending. They took advantage of the opportunity to score the goal when it came. Rosa. Jimenez. Caballo. Oh. Well executed trap. They have shown a very good uh, football moment. Even another good chance to, to score after the goal. But it's been all Boca Juniors in the first half. In spite of being down in the score, one nil. Bombonera on the banks of the Boca, the mouth of the River Plate. El Barrio de la Boca. Did you know, I was, I was down there and I went to the Museum of La Boca. The Wax Museum. Beautiful. Say, no. <laughs> it was three rooms. They had like wax statues of Basque guys fighting. I don't In, uh, they found Jeremias. Ah. Glory be. Well, there's not much action going on. We have the update about lost children, you know? It's very traumatic. <laughs> Greece the Val. Ibarra. Devis. He had that well mapped out. A little shoving in the area. He looks a bit jaded these days, huh? Arguing at the ref. It's all about getting back on the pitch. He needs minutes. Continuity, being on the pitch, getting back to his uh, usual, very talented and dangerous. Calito Tevez. Hey, pa, pa. Bilos brought down. He's a handful. Mental lapses. And then you pay the price. See, once again, that should not happen. The defender should be so much more solid than that. He loses the ball, then he has to bring Vilos down on Banfield with a good chance. It's a bit far though. Ooh, not a bad effort. Moreno y Fabianesi. Good 
Dubius. The, the, the syndrome Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Raúl Esteves. Huh? When he comes on as a substitute, he's great. Scores goals, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and we love uh, Pipa Esteves. When he goes from the get-go, absolutely nothing. Well, lobbed over for Moreno y Fabianesi. Down to the area, Bilos. No support coming, this will be handled by Calvo. Hoke on the counter-attack, goes to Tevez. Tevez. Both backfield players got the ball for a moment, but no whistle from Bassi. Bonancieri, making it safe as the flag remained down on Vilos. Carlos Tevez, he has to slow down. You know, he's too concerned about the ref, about, you know, that they have to make the calls. Just play. And preferably get the ball and get everybody else involved. That's the job of the playmaker. Big clearance there. Sanguinetti, Cavallo, Barassa. Calvo. Yes, the back four getting a lot of mentions early on in this match. Vinto. Ibarra. Let's try that one again. Davis. Thought about shooting it, gets it to Esqueloto, right back to Davis. Tough angle. Cervera. What any Fabian is he chasing? Did he get a corner kick? Not quite. Minefield, they keep this up. They may get the label of the giant killers. They uh, seem to do a much better job against the big boys. a bit first booking of the match and not even for a foul he has the ball hmm. he does have a point because the defender goes straight to Calito Tevez I don't think that would be a penalty but maybe right on the, if he would have made the call and give him a free kick and the yellow card comes only because of the constant arguing and complaining by Tevez. Well, he's got to concentrate. Task at hand. Tevez into Esqueloto. What's he got in front of him? Oh, the header, but it's over the crossbar from Donet. Better. Anything that happens for Boca offensively has to go through Barrochkeloto. Now, this ball, it doesn't have to be a header. You just touch the ball. If you hit the ball like that, 
he goes over the crossbar. He just touch. See, the keeper's already off the line. Cavallo. Not the referee there, and now comes to the near side, Moreno y Fabianesi. Cervera waits for his teammate. Skirts through. Rosa got a piece of it. Now Boca with it. Good defending by Crosa not to concede the corner. Devils. Enjoy La Bombone. Gonzalez now down by Pinto. Cristaval with some difficulties controlling it. Now he's got himself into a bit of trouble. Moreno y Fabianesi Cavallo. Don't give uh, some credit to the young man. He's going after the Banfield attackers. Alfredo Moreno warming up. Here's a chance for Cervera. Donet. Handball. The hand of Sanganetti. And another free kick. This time much closer. Sometimes it is the performance of the players on the pitch who will get the crowd well, that will get the crowd involved and other some other times it is the crowd with the chanting and singing that will get the players on the pitch involved and hopefully in this case for Boca to get the equalizer well, the crowd is doing their part the players are not, as we're into stoppage time. Cavallo. Banfield trying to weave that mist. We shouldn't have more than two minutes of uh, added on time. Not many interruptions. It'll be more than a minute. We pass that. Ibarra. Calvo. Lacking the precision, lacking just the sharpness that we expect from Boca Juniors. They did this in the Apertura. They had a bad start. They fell off the pace, and then they had to play catch-up, and they almost caught Independiente, but they dug too big of a hole. They don't want to do that again. Staring at a two-game losing streak in league, potentially. Cristobal, Ibarra in full flight. Great pace, and he has uh, complicated the on-field defense. They let it go by. Two minutes have finished, and I think that's the end of the half. Indeed it is. Well, Boca Juniors in a world of hurt right now as they trail Bonfield 1-0 in their own house. We'll be back with more Football Argentino after this. To the highlights, whatever highlights there were. There's one from midfield. Neves. Not very well oiled today, Boca. Jimenez. It's by Cristaval. 
Gets by him twice, gets the cross in. No one there at the far post. Moreno y Fabianesi laboring to get there. Did well to uh, make it a throw in and not a goal kick. Little things like that certainly help the cause. Charging up the left side, Calvo loses it. But there's a free kick for Boca. I spotted Marcelo Chilo Delgado warming up and he should and he he could and should be the first option for Calito Bianchi if the score remains the same. Esqueloto in the Just walked away. And Escaloto and Devis both have issue right now with our referee. We stub out. Ibarra. Committing more bodies into the attack. Donet. Check that. Estevez. Closing fast was Tevez, headed out by Rodriguez. Without seeing the replay, I bet my house that was a penalty. And that's a nice house. Well, what people don't know is I just sold it. Let's see, look. Ball goes through. He trips on the leg and I don't uh, to me that's a penalty I'll tell you, I look at plays like that I'm hey. glad I'm not a ref it happens so quick and that the ball goes through the player goes through Ross blocked by Sanguinetti corner kick okay maybe the beach Unfortunately, that happens also when you have a reputation like Guillermo Barocchiloto does. Look again. Not a bad oh. in the second half. No save. He knows now there's no point for Barocchiloto to hung, hang on to the ball, so he now reacts quickly. Good cross. Not the most powerful headers. Palermo, Bracamonte. Esqueloto and uh, Donet have a good feel for each other. They seem to be doing most of the connecting. Boca starting to really show some uh, grit now as they've got most of the possession in the second half. That may be also due to Banfield. Uh, Playing a little bit more on their heels, protecting that lead. Now they have it. Jimenez. Bilos was on the left, trying to get the defender away. He has two other players waiting for the cross. And from a very uncomfortable position, he tries to do the unthinkable, the impossible. Score from there. Vera went down in the first half, and now he's got some more problems. No Roberto Colauti. But Chilo Delgado was not the first option because we had mentioned before the player who's been scoring for Boca in Copa Libertadores, Moreno. Two goals against Colo Colo at Estadio Monumental in Santiago for the victory. He replaced number 26, Gabriel Cristobal. A forward for a midfielder. And Ignacio back to earth and Rosario Central now piecing together a nice season and they need the points because they would be relegated if the season ended today. Here's the uncompromising Jose Luis Sanchez. He puts a nice ball in. He manages. Oh, he showed it too early. Good idea though. Demes. Donet. Now 
Now the cross. Plenty of blue jerseys there, but first on the scene, Julio Barazza. Sanchez. That was a good play by Bilos. It kind of kept the defense flat-footed. Allowed the ball to get to Moreno and Fabianesi. Sanchez. See, he doesn't do it very often, but only once per half is enough to put the game away. He did it in the first half, the ball found the net. In the second half, this only one time. Made up on Dancheri. Oh. Make the best save of the game, basically. <laughs> Digo Crosa didn't even jump. Vilos. Sanchez, a whirlwind since he's come in. Rayon, says Gustavo Bassi, Bilos and Sanchez doing the job together. Is that ball not out of play? Amazing. Well, that's a dangerous ball, and now Banfield for Sanchez. It'll slow for him. Does he get off the left foot if he can? Cannot. Rosa. Sloppy, sloppy play in the back from Boca. Playing simultaneously, Niels to Arsenal, Neil. Great ball on the left side. Benal! Esqueloto brought down in full flight. And Barazza sliced him down and a penalty awarded. Without seeing the replay, <laughs> out of the two, I would have gone with the other one. Well, it wouldn't be a Boca game without controversy. Yeah, that's yeah. a clear yeah. If it happens twice, you got to get it. Yeah. Great run. Diagonally by Guillermo Barrochiquiloto, even getting a piece of that ball without the ball touching the ground. And softly enough to put it right in front of him. I believe it was Hugo Ibarra put that ball in. It was wonderful. He was back. Well, Racing look like they're going to go three for three. And they're doing good in the Libertadores. Ozzy Ardiles has Racing really on four. <laughs> These two former teammates at Gimnasia, Esqueloto and Nose. Esqueloto. Goal! Goal! Minute 59, Boca equalize. And maybe that's the spark. Well, he does it all. He's brought down, he takes the penalties, he goes up, get the ball from the back of the net. Very well taken. For a right footed player, that's going against the logic. He normally would go to the left of the goalkeeper, where the goalkeeper went, actually. Keeping it at ground level. Great placement. Sorry about that, Christian, but the first goal of the season for Esqueloto. He was injured through most of the apertura, came back late and did uh, ignite Boca's push towards Independiente, which just fell short thanks to Lucas Busanetti. That's an offside. And Esqueloto, I love how he ran over to Bassi. I'm trying to think what would he possibly say. And he just awarded you a penalty. Thank all, you. All I can think of though is, what about the one before? Should have got one? <laughs> well, thank you for you know, making the call. See, he does it all. Now he's going on referee. But one of those players who's worth taking the ticket for. Or, as may be the case in some of these stadiums, sneaking in through one of the cracks <laughs> in the old architecture. Another uh, free kick in Boca's direction. 
Ibarra. He's really stroking it now. Calvo. Esqueloto, he's really picked on Barraza and he's had his way with the young right back. Bianchi without even touching the ball being very involved everyone went back to their original uh, positions Guillermo Barroche to the left Donet to the right side of the midfield take a look at Boca playing now so much better Esqueloto Sanguinetti will give up the corner And the difference with the first half is now they do create chances. They do get close to the goalkeeper. Not only they keep possession of the ball, they also score. At the far post, knocked out by a pair of Banfield defenders. A shot back in. Calvo with some firepower. Getting close, Palo, creating chances. Palo coming along nicely. And Garisto off the bench. There's Sanguinetti. Is it just me or does Sanguinetti kind of look like Martin Cardetti? up a bit of a knock the shields are up behind Luis Garisto I'd hate to think someone would throw something from a 60 year old man wow not that anything should ever be thrown like if he was 45 it would be okay yeah because <laughs> you and me bombs away I 
evidently it is a hot day in Buenos Aires. Banfield in the second half, midway, midway through the second half, will try to kill off as much time as possible because even the tie, the one point they would get with the 1-1, one -one, it's very good business for the visitors. Continuing to be an aerial threat. Gannett is going to wait to the last moment to see if he can come back in again. And it's a no-go. Juan Quiroga, who is uh, one of the younger players on the roster at 20, comes in. Ibarra. They're going to go right at Quiroga. Moreno. Quiroga's first touch, not a good one, but here he is again. Sanchez. Calvo. Oh, Esqueloto, lovely. Calvo's got some pace on him. Sanchez, stumbling over that ball. Substitutions for both sides, adding a lot to the match. Tevez turns on Quiroga. Much easier than it was Ooh, against Sanguinetti. Goal! Goal! Guillermo Barros Esqueloto with the volley. It's in the back of the net, and Boca have come all the way back. They lead it 2-1. to one. This is an unforgettable moment. Goals like this, you enjoy. Don't talk about it so much. Just enjoy. Beautiful. Go la so. Is that the punctuation mark at the end there? And as we said, they went right at Quiroga. devin has got a lot of space. Fantastic. Ooh. That's the celebration for that goal. Reminded me of uh, Paolo Di Canio a couple of seasons ago. Similar. A volley like that is just astonishing, amazing. So just like that, he has two goals this season. And Boca now in charge here. Take notice that Guillermo Barros Quiroz is not a left-footed player, right? but he evidently... <laughs> he can use it he can when use called it. upon. Ambidexterity, folks. Charging in was Donet, but just poked away by Rodriguez. Now Esqueloto, all Boca. 20 minutes to go. Turning in. Rosario Central get their second win on the trot. Jimenez. Quiroga. 
Sanchez. Bilos. He puts in a cross. He puts in a good cross. He is exhausted. Doing way too much running. Bilos. Not a bad cross at all. With the inside of the left foot, he could be the next uh, substitution for Banfield, Walter Jimenez. As we do see Raul Caccini, he now some leadership in the midfield, someone to control that part of the field. Great victory uh, for tell, Rosario. Someone tell Benedetto, we already got that score. <laughs> Chicago. All of a sudden, red hot. Vamos a ver estudiantes. Tevez steps aside as they get a little more defensive. Hey, Racing haven't conceded a goal either. Claudio Ubeda will be involved a lot there. Some work to do for Boga. Got to keep this momentum going. Barasa. to Moreno y Fabianesi. Gordiso. Only the leader of the defense nowadays. Donet. Oh, this really has a chance now, Moreno. At the far post. Let's get out looking for the hat trick. Barra. Banfield right now on the ropes. Sanchez the target of that Moreno y Fabian as he lobbed. But just when Boca are really surging, he has to come in to replace Captain Javier Sanganetti. There's not many people I've seen who stay on side better than this guy. He knows exactly where he is at all times. It is Guillermo Barra Chiquiloto, though, huh? Being the, the creative force. That didn't look like an offside, but it was a beautiful play. Boca's best moments came in the second half after the substitution. With Guillermo Barroch in the lead. Bilos. Barra really gave him a good shoving there. Lowering the uh, shoulder. That's not fair. I feel already in trouble. Now they have to face Cello Delgado. Sanchez brings it down. And getting a pawn, it was Abondanzieri. This is right now Carlitos Bianchi's main concern. That's why he goes with 
Marcelo Chilo Delgado possibly to replace uh, Raúl Esteves. He needs another goal to seal the victory. As well as they are playing. So much better than Banfield. It's only a one goal advantage. One mistake, one good play by Banfield, and it's easily a 2-2 two -two game again. It's going to be tricky for Nosset. He does well. Moreno. Good job of staying on side, but he's got to work on that finishing. Moreno y Fabianesi. Space on the right side. Here comes Banfield. Free kick coming as Rosa late on that challenge. It's pretty close though. This is exactly what I mean. Now, from a play like this, from a free kick, a setup play came the goal by Bilos in the first half. He's so good up in the air. It is for Guillermo Barros Quiloto. Job well done. Delgado to help Boca wrap it up, but still 15 odd minutes to go. What enemy Fabianesi into the wall now off the left foot, not gonna threaten. Cello Delgado's first touch, Cavallo. Ooh. Look for Mendez. Bondanzieri. Who got play? Lampfield with it. They're getting some more possession now after that run of Boca chances. Ibarra. Popped over by Rodriguez. A collision. A little bad blood. Moreno. Side again and just can't get it right. Plenty of space for Bilos. Signals crossed there between Moreno and Fabianesi and Jimenez. Delgado. Sanchez continues to provide some good minutes for Banfield. This one out of the reach of Moreno and Fabianesi. Mr. Play at Rosario Central. Moreno y Fabianesi. Sanchez, he's the only Banfield player in the box. The turn, Delgado. Now into the midfield. Well, he might pull that one out and just... Vilos. Scooped away by Rosa and Burdizo. Oh, 
played 80 minutes. He's the new captain for Banfield, replacing Saganetti, Adrian Gonzalez. Reason to do any of that. Looked like Moreno was held on to, but play on. against Bonfield. Took a while, but it finally comes. Number three of the game because Boca had two players booked. Carlos Tevez, who's not on the pitch any longer, and the keeper, Abondanche. Great move here by Tevez to go th through the two defenders, brought down in the end by Santiago Rodriguez. I believe we had substitution number Three for Banfield. Only Fabian Essi on the sideline will let you know who replaced him. Right, right in front of Bassi, and they've uncorked it. Uh oh, and it's Rodriguez. How about that? That's pretty efficient work, my man. Two yellows within a minute. He's done. Yeah, and in this case, uh, it, it is the player who has to be much more careful than that. The ref is right next to the play. It is only two yards away from the edge of the box. He just got the book in a minute ago. Though sometimes those moments are unavoidable because of uh, the quickness uh, of the play or what's happening on the pitch. Good chance here for Marcelo Chilo Delgado. Right in front, Boca looking up, finally put it away, and they almost did, no sé. Well, it was two yellow cards, what was it, who was it we did it a few years ago? Was it Sebastian Rambet, who came off the bench, got a yellow, scored a goal, they got another yellow in about five minutes. Breathtaking, really. Santiago Rodriguez didn't get the goal, but he certainly topped it time-wise. really have to put their foot down here get that third goal if they can it's a 10-man Banfield side don't let them have any more life in it goes flag down and uh, Delgado misses quite a second half for Boca I was going to say something, a much better second half altogether. So many more chances for Boca, especially. Good job here. See how he goes between the defenders with the pass, Pipa Estevez, and then Chilo Delgado trying to finish. Very good second half by Ian Davis. Uzi Bada, 85th minute. Iroga. Into the 
midfield. Delgado, good first touch, not so good on the second. Next week, Boca travel to La Plata to take on Estudiantes. That should be a tremendous match, especially the way Estudiantes are playing. Field at home against struggling San Lorenzo. Sanchez muscling his way in. Bilos pushing through Carraro. Moving dangerously, Boca. Tevez. Lucky there as Calvo looked like he lost touch with that ball, but he can eat up some more time here. Calvo does a very good job defending, but he seems to feel so much more comfortable. Uh -oh. Gado, asked for the handball, not given. From the midfield up. We know he's an improvised uh, left side fullback. Yeah, they put him in the midfield a fair deal. Ooh, clever from Sanchez. Not all they get up to B, lost one on one. And we get a corner kick. And you don't want that with Daniel Bilos in the mix. Doesn't have to leave his feet to get a good solid stroke on goal. as much space for Moreno off to Delgado and this time Moreno is offside it was quite a triptych Estevez, Moreno, Delgado has been a warrior. Bilos gave Banfield the advantage in the first half. Such a fighter. Still has a chance. Another good opportunity for Banfield via free kick. Bilos again the target. It comes out struck in. Abonats yet he lost his footing. No harm done. Just a minute left. Bonfield up 1-0 at halftime, but Boca pouring it on in half number two. As they scored twice, probably could have scored a couple more. They almost scored one there as Estevez continues his solid half number two. It is never going to happen if you strike it like that. Nice pass by Marcelo Chilo Delgado. You have to go with the inside of the foot or keep the ball at really ground level if you want to have a chance like that. There they go again. Well, that offside trap was just executed. I don't know if they did it, but they'll get the love from... Pains me that I can't remember. I wish I could help you, but I love seeing you. Barra. 
over into stoppage time. Slipping through. But out of play from Carlo. There he is again. But well, just to take you out of your mystery, Max, it is uh, Mr. Olawe. Double O. In the sideline, yeah. The assistant to Basi. Like, good work by the ref today. I like to call Olagwe smiley. He's always got that scowl on his face. Apparently when he gets home, he's all laughter. Love behind the Banfield defense. Moreno chasing it. Looks like Boca have done enough. A hard-fought challenge from Banfield. And Boca certainly needed this because they want to keep pace with... Not only Velez and Racing, but Olimpo and Union of Santa Fe. Delgado, Estevez, this trio have wowed the crowd here in the last few minutes. Oh, top shelf from Moreno. Finally, he gets it right. And in the 92nd minute, it's 3-1. Those three work great together, but uh, you have to give most of it to Pipa Estevez. Having a tremendous uh, last 15 minutes, he initiated the play from the midfield, he distributed the ball. There he is, left foot pass to Moreno. I thought he was going to go with uh, Chelo Delgado on the other end. Decided to go to the near post, a lot of power. This is the goal they were looking for much sooner than this. But hey, it sees the victory and the three points at La Bombonera for Los Senesis. Remember you said uh, Estevez has that Salt Shark complex? Maybe he just said, hey, I'm just coming into the match at halftime. Forget about the first half. I'm a sub, I'm a sub. Hey, it works. Moreno gets his first league goal, his third goal in all competitions. Welcome back. What a second half for Boca. It's going to drive the coaches crazy. Have a first half like that. And then see them play at their full potential. And uh, apparently that is that. No, nope. Gustavo Bassi will push into the fourth minute of stoppage time. That was rather silly. <laughs> Only in the strange world of Gustavo Bassi. That'll do it. Boca, three second half, unanswered goals. They run out winners, three to one.